Hi, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Ion Oshkosh. I'm your host, Cheryl Hens. Happy New Year to you all. Uh, I, I have to say that we have not done a show in a couple of months. I had been very sick with bronchitis and so forth and just simply couldn't do it. So um, it's, uh, they, we joked earlier, am I going to remember how to do it? But I am. So I'm back and uh, happy to be back. But I hope you all had uh, really wonderful happy, joyous, and blessed holidays, and uh, that you're going to uh, have a, a great new year. So with that said, um, I'm very happy to uh, not just be here, but to welcome uh, someone to the show who has never been here before. Uh, his name is Mike Rorkast. He is the executive director of the Fox Valley Memory Project. And so this evening we're going to be talking about dementia, um, you know, how it's diagnosed, the stages, and all those things, and then we'll talk about what the Fox Valley Memory Project does. So welcome to the show, Mike. It's Great. a pleasure to have you. Thank you, Cheryl. Um, I'm glad to be here. Yes. Appreciate it. Yes. Yeah. And can I, can I share with folks where you've been? Sure. Yeah. Um, this, this was, uh, I had another guest scheduled for tonight. Um, they had something come up. They couldn't do it. So I thought, okay, I got to find someone. And just that same morning, um, Mike had sent me an email and I responded back and I said, can you do Thursday night? Well, he was in Dubai. <laughs> <laughs> of all places. Yeah. Yes, of all places. <laughs> those were going to be my words. And uh, you, you just got back, what, Tuesday? Mm -hmm. yeah. Tuesday evening, yeah. So, and this is Thursday evening, so um, he's still dealing with a little bit of jet lag, but I've never had a guest come from Dubai to be on the show. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, welcome. Uh, so, so well, let's, um, let's talk about this because, you know, dementia is such, it, it's an ugly, ugly disease. It really is, uh, the way it just, you know, tears a person's mind down. And um, let's, let's talk first about what dementia is exactly and mm -hmm. the difference. A lot of people just say Alzheimer's. Mm -hmm. And I know Alzheimer's is probably, is it the most common form of dementia it or is, one yes. of them? Yep. Yeah, so, but there is a difference. Alzheimer's mm -hmm. is not dementia, it's a form of dementia but dementia is not always Alzheimer's. Correct. So yeah. let's talk about what dementia is mm -hmm. and, um, and I guess maybe the differences between Alzheimer's and dementia, and there are a lot of other forms of dementia, but... There are. Uh, Th there are a lot of similarities, <coughs> though. So dementia is the broad term. Dementia is like cancer, and Alzheimer's is the most common form of dementia. Uh, probably 60, 60 to 70 percent of diagnosed dementias are Alzheimer's. Wow. And uh, the others, there's what they call Lewy body, frontal temporal dementia, vascular dementia, um, actually, there can be alcohol-related dementia. Uh, basically, mm. dementia is the common things that the challenge that cause the challenges for both the person with the dementia and equally important, their caregiver or care partner, is that they lose their short-term memory mm -hmm. and it progressively gets worse. Um, uh, for example, a uh, person in one of our programs today, we had. It was his birthday today, and we said, I went in and said happy birthday to him, and I left uh, and to go back to doing some work I was doing, yeah. and then I heard later they sang happy birthday to him about 15 minutes after I had been in, and he didn't even remember. So his short-term memory is not doing very well. Yeah. So that's the first, that's what, that's the one of the main things. Uh, and then, then it be, leads into like their inability to problem solve. Yeah. So. Is it always short term memory? Mostly. Or, okay, so yes, mostly it mostly is. Mostly it's short term memory. Uh, okay. Long term memory, long term memory is eventually affected, but much, much later in the. One of the in, final phases yes, probably or stages. Yes. Uh, okay. Long-term memories stay intact much, much longer and much better. That's why sometimes you will see people who have dementia remember things from their childhood like it was so clear. Or yeah. they still, Glenn Campbell would be able to perform. Yes. He could sing all his songs. Yeah. Uh, and he had Alzheimer's. 
and he probably would not remember the next day that he did a concert, yeah. but he could still remember all the songs, he could hit all the notes, play his guitar, um, and he still performed because that Isn't part of his brain, it was still working. Yeah. And, and that's a lot what we focus on. We try, to, we try to figure out what is still working and how we can help people and the care partners tap into what's still working sure. to make this, you're right, it's a challenging journey, but we try to help them through those challenges by yeah. focusing on what they can do, not what they can't. Sure. So you mentioned Louis Body, mm -hmm. um, and, and that's one that I have mm -hmm. also commonly heard okay. of. But I don't really know what that is. Okay. What, how does that <laughs> yeah. present itself in a person? Okay, so um, and I sometimes get Louis body and frontal temporal mixed up. So, uh, but I'm gonna. Okay. So Louis body can have and frontal temporal. They both they could have some other challenges like hallucinations um, that don't necessarily happen with Alzheimer's. Uh, so that's that's one form of, or that's one extra potential problem. They still do have short-term memory loss, uh, and they do lose their abilities to problem solve. Hmm. Uh, they may have Lewy body and frontal temporal can have more some behavioral challenges. Sleep becomes challenging, uh, or can be more challenging than someone with Alzheimer's. Um, also, um, the um, uh, some of just behavioral agitation could also maybe become a little bit more as well. Sure. But again, there's, there is the, the main, the, there is some though very similar concepts between all of them. Yeah. And it coupled <coughs> just, it's progressive, meaning there's no cure um, oh, okay. for these. Right. And, and it eventually it does, it, it does end, result in end of life. And so at that point then, I, I want to talk about, um, you know, what the, uh, where dementia ranks or where Alzheimer's ranks, maybe they rank differently, uh, but where they rank in the leading causes of death mm -hmm. for people in the United sure. States? Um, six to seven, uh, six to oh. seventh, um, and, mm. and that would be all dementias if okay. you, and Alzheimer's, they all can, lead, they all lead, unfortunately, to end of life. Uh, and the, uh, but they, but they're either it's the sixth, the seventh leading cause of death now. Uh, it's the only one in the top ten that is still increasing, except hmm. for unfortunately uh, drug overdoses and uh, suicides. And so those are kind of depending on how they count the statistics. Sure. Uh, but most other deaths, like cancer, heart-related issues, those have all been declining. And um, hmm. so it's... Um, and this is rising. And this is rising. It is, yes. So, no. this may be a dumb question. No. But <laughs> I was always told by teachers and yep. oh, folks yeah. I've been interviewing, hey, Cheryl, there's no such thing sure. as a dumb question. So, I'm just going to ask it. So, you lose, basically, you, you lose your mind. I mean, Not you know... Completely, but yeah. Yeah, but at, toward the end. Sure. What is it that actually, because it's not like a heart attack where you might just have a fatal heart attack and mm -hmm. that's it, mm -hmm. um, you're losing memory and the ability to problem solve, the ability to do certain things. What component of the disease causes death? Good question. So that, yeah, so there's a couple of things. So. The brain is deteriorating. It's becoming smaller. Mm -hmm. And the initial stages is the part of your brain that handles short-term memory. And somebody described this very graphically, but it made me understand it. That part of the brain is no longer there or no longer functioning. Mm -hmm. So you can't expect them to remember. I can't ex if I had to, Alzheimer's, you couldn't expect me to remember our conversation possibly five minutes after we had it. Because right, right. uh, my brain just is not capable of do doing mm -hmm. that. And so that, that happens like to problem solving skills and eventually to long term. But then also, it also has physiological changes and that's really what leads to cause of death okay. is uh, our end of life is that the brain starts to forget or not be able to keep your body functioning yeah. uh, eventually they have trouble swallowing um, mm. they um, could choke very easily 
Wow. Uh, and so sometimes they they literally they don't eat uh, because they they forget they can't they don't know how to chew they're, they're and so mm. I know I'm getting a little but that's no but that's good because those are exactly the kind of things that I was looking for mm. because I didn't understand it right uh, and you know. and eventually the organs then start to shut down and then that can lead to the passing now. A compl a com compl complicating issues is that they have other health issues too. And sometimes other health issues may, um, you know, cancer or heart disease. And a lot of people with uh, Alzheimer's or dementia do have some heart issues. Sure. That mm, there is a connection between cardiovascular risk and Alzheimer's and dementia. It's not hmm. um, strongly connected, but I have two doctors on my board and we work with the Wisconsin Alzheimer's Institute which is connected to Madison's Medical College, they believe there's a strong correlation between cardiovascular risk and Alzheimer's hmm. and dementia. One thing that um, I was kind of surprised by is that um, Parkinson's disease and Huntington's disease mm -hmm. are considered forms of dementia. And I would never have made that connection because you think about memory loss Correct. being associated with dementia. But I know people, uh, I don't think I've known anyone with Huntington, Huntington's disease, but I have known a couple of people with Parkinson's, and their memory is just as sharp as mm -hmm. a brand new knife, you yes, know? Yes, sure. Um, so how, how do those two sort of fit into the dementia box? I'm not as up to date on that. Okay, so I will, fine. I just, I always, yeah, um, I, I mean, uh, it can, it can cause memory loss. It doesn't though with all of them. I have a mm -hmm. friend who has Parkinson's <coughs> and his, his issues are pretty more, most physiological, you know, mm -hmm. um, the, uh, just the physiological, yeah. not his, he's still extremely sharp mentally, yeah. you know, his mind is still fine, but that could change as the disease progresses. And so um, we do, I do have some people that I can connect to so we can help people that have Parkinson's um, or Huntington's, um, but that's where I would use some of my staff who have a more better understanding of it than sure, I do. So sure. I don't want to misrepresent something. No, or, or no, that's mistake. fine. I, yeah. I totally appreciate sure. totally appreciate that. Um, and, and I appreciate your saying you're not as up to date on that. That you know, That's certainly fair. You can't know everything, right? Well. <laughs> There's I try. <laughs> <laughs> I do too, but the brain is only, you well, know, it can only true. grasp that's true. so But I was in Dubai for two weeks before that, I got here. Yeah, so so I, that's a good yeah. excuse. There, we'll, there we go. We'll, we'll go with that. that. Yeah. Yes, we'll go with that one. Yeah. So mm -hmm. um, I, I'm going to ask sure. if, if this is, if dementia is hereditary. And why I'm asking that is because on my father's side of mm -hmm. the family, now there were a lot of kids, and um, I would say that... Oh gosh, probably 90% of his siblings had mm -hmm. some form of dementia sure. and died from it mm -hmm. and other correlating diseases, mm -hmm. health issues. Uh, now my father, fortunately, did he had no memory loss. His memory was just as sharp as, you know, when he was probably in his 20s or 30s. Um, but to have all these kids and so many of them have succumbed to dementia, I is it hereditary? They don't know for sure. Okay. They do believe the medical community has not found a st specific strong link to, to it being hereditary. Um, all the, they, they have done a lot of studies, though long-term studies, and actually Madison is they're doing, they're finishing up a long, over 20 year study of children whose parents had dementia. And they are doing a lot of testing on them and to seeing, and they're, they're eventually going to see those results probably in another five to 10 years, or at least have uh, a better idea to see if there is a statistical correlation, um, a stronger one. But that they're still not sure. Uh, because mm. there is, uh, I have a doctor on my board who is, he's got it in his family, but he's now, he's a retired out of Theta Care and he's in his 70s and he doesn't have any symptoms or anything yeah. of it. So, but he still could get it. He, he, sure. He, so they don't know. And that's sort of the, sometimes the frustrating thing with Alzheimer's and dementia is 
that after so many years of study and billions of, literally billions of dollars that uh, medical community and drug companies, uh, there still is unfortunately no cure and they still, there's still debate on what does cause it. Um, they do believe that it's caused by what's called plaques that build up in the brain and, uh, and they know that it's a deterioration of the brain, but that's, mm -hmm. that's about as definitive as it is. Wow. So. Um, how is it diagnosed? And here's one thing that I want to preface that with, mm -hmm. I guess, is that, you know, I think from time to time we all have situations where we're, we're talking to someone. Uh, I've had it happen to me on this show um, a number of times over the years, and I've been doing the show since uh, 2002 with a couple of breaks in there for COVID, and I took a year off. Um, didn't know I was going to take a year off. I thought mm -hmm. I was done. Okay. <laughs> but we came back by popular demand. Mm -hmm. um, but I've had it happen to me where I'll be, I know exactly what I'm going to say. Um, I'll start saying it. And just like that, my brain just freezes. Mm -hmm. And I lose total track of what I was going to say. Mm -hmm. And it's very embarrassing when it happens because, you know, you're sitting there. Uh, you're on a roll and all of a sudden, boom, it just comes to a screeching halt. But then I do think of it usually. Um, or I'll be trying to, um, you know, talk about something in the news or whatever. And, or, uh, you know, gosh, who, do, who sang that song? Uh, you know, and I'll say the song and it was so-and-so, but I can't think of their name. You know, and yet it's a popular name, for example. Mm -hmm. Are those things to be concerned about? Not necessarily. Okay. No, no. We all have memory loss, and we all that's be that's part of the aging process, and that's that's a very common question that I get asked, mm -hmm. and our staff gets <laughs> asked, and um, uh, memory loss is is normal. I mean, I've been losing my keys since I was twenty years old, so <laughs> and I still lose my keys. Now, what would be concerning is if I would put my keys in a very odd place, like say the microwave, uh, or and then not be able to figure out what I did with it. Mm -hmm. Now that would be kind of a concern because it would be very abnormal to what I w might do. Or another example is um, I was driving recently to Appleton from Nina and I was going to a certain place and but I started thinking about some other things so I just went right by the exit yep and I'm I've like done oh boy okay so you know and I'm like okay I was so able okay I got to go up to the next exit got to make a left I would knew how I, I, I could navigate myself where I needed to go didn't yeah. even have to get back on the freeway I knew exactly how to do the back roads so and I'm thinking okay I'm okay and uh, yeah. and that's that's normal now if let's say I blew past that exit and I just kept going yeah. and then I didn't know what to do. Or if I was would driving up to Appleton and I've lived in my home over almost 30 years, if I forgot how to get home, that's a real red flag. Oh yeah, for so sure. That would be, I mean, that kind of a, uh, of a unfortunate incident, but that's what you really have to work. That's yeah. really where it's, uh, and, and most people, you know, this is, I, I want to men mention, most people don't get Alzheimer's and dementia. I mean, it, it is age, related to age. So hmm. the older you get, you do, your, your risk increases. Hmm. But still, most people don't develop um, Alzheimer's uh, or other dementias. It's probably less than 10%. Now, really? It, yeah. Oh, yeah. It, now, it does increase with age. So if you, sure. if you live yeah. into your 90s, then... You know, it's maybe one out of three, or you know, all maybe closer to two out. Depend and again, depending yeah. on um, there are differences in race. Uh, certain races, hmm. unfortunately, have higher risk. Women have higher risk than men. Uh, they're not Great. quite sure why. <laughs> yeah, I know they're Thanks. not quite sure. Why. Thanks for other that, than, Mike. <laughs> other than women, they'll live longer. <laughs> That's one of the and age is still a risk factor. Yeah. So um, so women have a higher have a higher incident rate. Um, People with uh, intellectual uh, developmental disability, people with Down syndrome, they have an extremely high risk, uh, mm. like over 50% if wow. they live into the, like if they live to 60. So they have one of the highest risk factors for um, Alzheimer's. And um, uh, so, but it's, huh. it's not guaranteed. Uh, I mean, 
I have a I have a friend uh, who's 92 years old, and he's physically he's got some challenges as anybody would at 92, but mentally he's still sharp. Right. And and then his wife passed from Alzheimer's, and she oh. was probably five years I think around five maybe five years younger. Yeah. So. Well, you know. I have had that very same thing happen where I'm driving down the road, mm -hmm. uh, usually mm -hmm. on the highway, and yep, just you start you just, thinking about something else, right. or you get into whatever you're listening to on the radio, whether it's a song or uh, a talk show or you know, whatever it might be, and you just, you know, it's, you just forget. We've got so much on our minds these mm -hmm. days, and I don't think it's getting any better. Um, and so, you know, we can only process so much. We, we joke about, hey, you know, you can only hold so much in your head. But it is true. We're thinking about other things. Sure. Um, it's just like, you know, I've tried meditating so often and I can't do it because I sit there. I can, I can meditate for maybe a minute mm -hmm. and then stuff starts creeping into my mind. And before you know it, I'm thinking about what I need to pick up at the grocery store and what I have to do for, you know, the next article that I'm writing or whatever the case may be. I cannot meditate. I just can't do it. We have too many things on our minds. We have too. And too, too many things on our plates. The, the um, information age has been a blessing and somewhat of a curse altogether. And I think that's one of them is that yeah. um, there's so much information that we get hit with. Uh, with media, social media, phones, uh, it's, uh, yeah. it's our, I think it's impossible. I, I used to think I have a Rolodex in my head and I'm going through the Rolodex and if there's any audience out there, there is, if you look up Rolodex if you don't know what it is. You know, yeah. Younger people might not know what, <laughs> they a, don't know what it is. They don't know what a I'm Rolodex is. I'm going to interrupt you for just oh, sure. a moment. Yeah. Your microphone's slipping way oh, down. Okay. Um, and if need be, you can just put it on, uh, on your shirt. Um, okay. You know, rather than on, I'm not sure why it's slipping, but there I just happened to notice. No, it no, was thank like you. Way down. Sure. Um, anyway, I was sorry to interrupt. No, 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 so no, no, no worries. Yeah, that, kids, that was it. People to that young people to But it, it, would yeah, not information know what a role overload is is something. And again, you know, it, it, as we <laughs> age, it, it we 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 just we don't remember what we were able to remember. That's all normal, part of the aging process. And yeah. it, and people. It's when it becomes severe and you, or, you know, and you can't do something that you were so easily able to do, like go home, yeah. or if you were gardening for years and, or cooking and all of a sudden you just stopped, that would be another red flag. Sure. Let's say you cooked for years and then all of a sudden uh, people might, you know, somebody with Alzheimer's might just, they go, oh, I can't remember anything, so they just stop doing it. Sure. That would be a red flag. <clears throat> how is Alzheimer's, uh, well, let's keep it broad. How mm -hmm. is dementia diagnosed? So there's several ways uh, that dementia can be diagnosed. So um, uh, usually it's through uh, a series of sort of paper and pencil tests okay. uh, and questions that a doctor uh, would ask uh, or any organ, any person, any, any health person could ask. We don't do diagnosing, by the way. That's not something that the Memory Project does. We refer people to a health provider, a doctor, sure. uh, or advanced practice nurse that works into that, that field that could actually help them with mm -hmm. that diagnosing. So those tests and uh, they'll, uh, some of the questions are to draw the face of a clock at three o'clock. Uh, it's to remember certain historical things that most people should remember uh, or to ask about things uh, to tell a story and then ask you to repeat those. Um, I actually had <laughs> inadvertently or, you know, interestingly had to go through one of those because my mom passed from dementia and I applied for a long-term care policy. So I had to put that down on my application, and so they put me through an hour interview on the phone, asking me all sorts of questions, and I knew what they were getting at. They basically were giving me a test to see if I had signs of dementia, which thankfully I didn't. Yes. Um, but that's what they, and so, you know, they, they would like read a story. It's almost like a, a test like from old schools, and then they would, sure. They would say, "What are what were the four colors that were mentioned in the 
four sentences that they said. You know, they would ask that, and then and then they they rate you. I'm guessing, you know, as to what hmm. your short term memory can do, and that's what they're measuring is short term memory because that's the easiest thing to figure out. Yeah. The problem solving is a little a little harder. They can figure out the short term memory pretty hmm. easily. So paper and pencil is one, uh, or you know, and um, and talking to people. Uh, the other is um, they are uh, spinal taps uh, can detect the the plaque oh, really? and the, that's building up in the uh, and they uh, can also do that. They're working on doing able to be able to do blood tests. Hmm. Um, so those are other ways. Those are still the blood tests aren't common yet. Uh, the spinal taps are only they're not as common. Uh, the other is MRI scans. So they can actually do scans and particularly over time to see how the brain is changing because the brain does start to physically shrink. I have seen on the mm. internet um, MRI scans. Um, you know, I don't know how to read MRI pictures. Right. I don't, I don't either. I, that's not what, but yeah. But I can <clears throat> definitely see. Sure, there's a difference. You know, the degradation from one stage to another. Right. And it's it's pretty, um, I'll use impressive, not in a good way, but it's it's, it's striking. Yes, it's striking. striking is it's striking. It's it's striking. Yes, yeah. it's um, and it does happen. Yes, and so that's the other that's the other way to 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 really to to get a, a true diagnosis mm -hmm. if you definitely have it. Um, and here in the area, we have the neuroscience group. I mean, any doctor can, you know, work. There's neurologists, but the neuroscience group does in, uh, and not to, you know, I mean, there's, uh, again, others, but they sure. do have yeah. a specific memory diagnostic group. Um, and mm -hmm. actually one of their doctors is on our board. Sure. So. And, and there are, uh, yeah. you mentioned that organization, and uh, there are actually two that are very similar. They have very similar names. Yes. It, it can get very confusing. It can you get have to be confusing. really careful. There's neurospine and neuroscience, yes. I think. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah. So. And I think there's another one, too. There could be, yeah. You know, I, I had to call someone one time for uh, an article that I was writing, and I, I saw that, and I thought, oh, now wait, I'm not sure which one I'm supposed to be calling because right. they're such similar names. But so is, is, there, um, is there a way to treat dementia um, and the, or slow the process down? Um, the, there, is some, there is some drugs uh, that they can use that can help with some of the symptoms, the behavioral issues. Uh, that, um, again, that's something that the healthcare community, you know, the doctors would talk with the person and with the family about. Um, there's potential, um, you know, complications if they're on other medications that might not interact well with these medications. So, yes, there are some, but it does not stop the disease. And what I've been told, it technique does, doesn't stop the progression, but it does help with some of the symptoms. You know, it might help mm -hmm. with maybe easing people's minds, making them calmer, making them um, uh, less agitated. Those are, that's how those medications can help. Um, I mean, I can only, I can, this, I can speak, I didn't understand what was happening to my mom when I, when I was trying to help her. And, but looking back with what I know now, I could definitely see that she was going through both losing short-term memory, problem-solving skills, but then she was also losing, and I mentioned this earlier, the physiological changes, and mm -hmm. there's a few I haven't mentioned. Uh, field of vision or your range and range of motion can change. Mm -hmm. So her vision was narrowing dramatically. So if you sure. came up uh, on the side, uh, she had really no peripheral vision, yeah. so she would just almost freak, uh, you hmm. know, if you would come up to her if she didn't see you coming, yeah. uh, because hmm. it was scary to her. And, and, he could under, and uh, so that's, those are other things that, that the disease does do. Sure. Um, but if you can, if you know those, you can hopefully work through those better mm -hmm. and help to keep the person calmer, because sure. it obviously would agitate her, and then she would be, and then she'd be realized, why am I like this? Yeah. So you try to minimize those agitations. So some of the medications can help with those kinds of issues, but also just good 
redirecting skills and mm -hmm. good interpersonal communication skills. Um, we've worked with the Appleton Police Department uh, to train their officers about how to recognize dementia in people that they interact with sure. uh, in different situations, whether it's a home issue or a traffic incident. And they actually have a particular officer who's very trained in this. And if she's on call or on duty, she's generally the first call if they believe that it's a person with dementia. Hmm. And she and others can use some of the same sort of de-escalation skills that they might use for someone with a mental health crisis, sure. for example. So it's it's <coughs> different, but it's it's similar. Right. So. Let's, we've got, gosh, we've got so much ground to sure, cover. I know, um, yeah. But uh, let's, let's just talk briefly, Mike, about the, the different stages. Mm -hmm. And I believe that there are what, four stages? Uh, I guess generally. I mean, I, yeah, I, I, I don't get, um, I didn't, I don't, yeah, I don't focus it on Well, let's those. just talk about what happens. Yes, yeah, <laughs> that's how, yeah, I'm, uh, yeah. Well, and, and I guess it's, you know, I, I don't want to, I'm not a healthcare person. I mean, I'm not a, I'm not Understood. a, I'm not yeah. a doctor, so I don't want to. Yeah. And that's that's their role is to tell them. But right. but again, so the the stages that that we most see and that our our participants is again, it's that short term memory, that problem solving skills, uh, then motor skills, okay. um, and then such as walking, yes, writing, um, walking, writing, um, vision, sense okay. of sight. Uh, or I'm sorry, sense of smell, touch changes. Okay. Um, that that whole thing can that starts to then happen, okay. and then um, then it becomes where they they start to shut down more. They become less mobile, um, mm -hmm. or they um, they have trouble speaking. Actually, they lose the ability to converse. They can't think of the right words or they'll say the wrong words. Um, and then sometimes that frustrates them, so then they just stop talking, mm -hmm. which is actually the worst thing for them to do. Um, you asked earlier, what can you do? The other thing that the healthcare community tells us, and doctors on our board and at the uh, medical college and at neurosciences, people with dementia need to stay physically, mentally, and socially active. And that's a lot of what our programs do. And I know you will talk about those later. Mm -hmm. uh, and not just us, but other programs do. Physically. But physically, mentally, mentally, and socially active. Okay. During the pandemic, people with Alzheimer's died at, they believe, a 10 to 20, maybe even higher percent faster pace than they would have. And they attributed it to no wow. social interaction. Wow. And basically limited activity. So they want, so walking. <clears throat> exercise we actually some people they may they may not remember how to uh, get from point a to point b on a bike but they can still ride a bike yeah so we've actually did a bike outing we plan to do more of those for people hmm. with dementia now we have people riding with them because they couldn't ride alone because yeah. they wouldn't know how to and we want to make sure they're safe in terms of traffic and things mm -hmm. like that too mm -hmm. but physically they're fine and yeah. so, um, and so, but that's good if they're, if they are, you got to keep the people, pe they, we want to keep them active. Mm -hmm. We want to have them have social interaction with other people. Uh, diet is also is important too. They say that they should eat healthy, um, you know, more of a Mediterranean, you know, it's everything they tell you to reduce your cardiovascular risk, that type of diet. Mm -hmm. So okay. they basically physically, mentally, and socially active. So with that, mm -hmm. I, I know that some people, uh, they just simply, they don't want to socialize anymore because they, Correct. you know, they can't remember people's names or mm -hmm. whatever the case may be. And yet, um, I, I don't know how many we have now, but memory cafes are an absolutely wonderful mm -hmm. thing um, where, you know, people who have uh, Alzheimer's or any form of dementia, can go and be amongst people with similar issues and challenges, <clears throat> and yet it's they're being socially active, and it's a wonderful thing because there's no judgment from anybody. Correct. And the caregivers or whoever has taken them there, mm 
um, they can get support from those people. So uh, as, as part of the Fox Valley Memory Project, um, you know, what involvement do you have with memory cafes? Mm -hmm. And can we talk about memory cafes a little bit? Absolutely. And um, and then there's another program I want to talk about, MindWorks, too. That's, uh, MindWorks, that's, yes. okay. Yes, and so that's a All right. similar, it has some similarities, but it also has a, a big difference, which I'll go into. Okay. The memory cafes, yes, we actually do, um, uh, so we do 16 a month now. Uh, between um, uh, uh, Brilliant, uh, Chilton, Oshkosh, Nina, Menasha, Appleton, uh, out and out into New London and Wapaka. So this is in so, other cities as yes. well? Yes, oh absolutely. Okay. We All cover right. the four county areas of the greater Fox Valley region. So we cover Outagamie, uh, Winnebago, Calumet, and Wapaka counties. Okay. And memory cafes, you, you hit it perfect. They are designed for the person with dementia and their caregiver to go to a facilitated event. It's usually, well, we run them from 1.30 to 3. Uh, usually, there may be a couple differences, but generally we try to do them in the afternoon, 1.30 to 3. Um, it's a, a facilitator, a facilitated event. Could be a theme of music, craft. Uh, could be a fall event, um, something about the holidays. Uh, could be singing uh, patriotic songs for July 4th. Um, we'll have singing groups come in and perform with them. Uh, and by the way, we have a performing chorus to people with dementia. That, that that's another program we have too. But I'll, t I'll talk. I, I I love to talk about our program. So yeah. you'll, you'll, you you'll have trouble stopping me probably. Well, that's okay. I know. I know. Anyway, <laughs> I don't uh, care about that as uh, long as when we get to the end of the show. Yep. You stop. Yeah, I will. Don't <laughs> worry. I won't. But back to the memory cafes. No, they're, they're wonderful opportunities for the person with dementia to do something that either physical. I mean, they, the Nina Library, They um, uh, Nicole, who's the facilitator, she works at the library and volunteers. They're wonderful. They all are. Uh, but they did a fishing thing right off the right out off the library, and they caught fish. And mm -hmm. you know, so it was outside. It was some at least it was up walking, doing something, yeah. and doing something that I bet you the those participants they remember the you know fishing. I mean, sure. you know, particularly if people yeah. liked fishing, they will have many fond memories, and they'll be able to tap into that. Yeah. Um, so that's an example of of a memory cafe. We've had. Um, dance, uh, either dance group or we've had people start to dance for, we had an Elvis impersonator the, and uh, there was a couple. And they're the, everywhere, aren't the, they? They are, they are, <laughs> even in even in uh, Fox Valley. Uh, <laughs> anyway, and, and um, he was, he's, he's really good, uh, but there's a couple and uh, this one of the spouses has Alzheimer's and they used to own an Arthur Murray dance studio. Mm. So the, the one spouse, took his spouse's hand and they got up and danced and um, and before that he the person was just sitting there and really wasn't um, engaged in because in, he was but that music triggered the memories and his ability to sure. dance and his wife enjoyed it because I'm sure that didn't happen at home probably or probably not and probably or where else would they be able to to do something yeah. like that people should so, dance at home well they they should they actually should. and maybe they do um, but but this was a this so that yeah the memory cafes are wonderful experiences uh, sometimes the animals are involved and that they bring in animals um, and uh, so it's 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 a really neat and they're really open to the public yes um, so I mean, anybody can yeah. attend. You don't have to sign up. You can just go and attend, mm -hmm. and that's the idea. But we you have to know where they are because yes, they're in different know, places. You have to know. Like uh, there's a, a church in Nina that I do some work with, mm -hmm. and, um, you know, I was just doing their calendar last oh. night. I was working on it for the month of uh, February, okay. and I saw that we have a memory cafe oh, yeah. coming up there. That's great. Um, so, so that's a good thing. Um, <clears throat> you mentioned Arthur Murray. Most a lot of people probably don't even have any idea who Arthur Murray is. Uh, they can I look it up. I forgot about that. Yes. They can well, they can it look it up. They can Google it, 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 yeah. I mean, I know because sure. I'm old enough to know, but mm -hmm. also my mother uh, was oh. uh, the manager of an Arthur Murray studio here in Oshkosh mm. uh, way back when, so um, before I was born. Um, and that's actually kind of how she met my father. So mm -hmm. that's a story for another time. But sure. I, <laughs> uh, so I know very well what Arthur Murray's studios are. Um, but um, so, th so these memory cafes are 
uh, held in different locations. Mm -hmm. How can they find out where they're held? So yeah, we have uh, on our website, so there's, uh, you can go to our website, it's www.foxvalleymemoryproject.org. We've got it up on the screen org. right now. Yep. Um, and that's, you can go there and you'll, our site can take you to the memory cafes. Mm -hmm. um, we have a monthly newsletter and then we send weekly updates and actually I have a copy of that uh, handy here. And so we have all our memory cafes that are actually oh, listed wonderful. out in a calendar format so people can actually see that and then has the location. Uh, we not only have uh, the memory cafes Monday through Thursdays, we actually do lunch bunches. So we have oh. what we call a lunch bunch. We have four lunch outings um, every month. Uh, we do one in each of the counties that we support. Uh, and we found those to be very helpful. Those are more just social. Uh, we do have a person from staff there because there is a small cost to the participant, be, but then we pay the, the rest of the bill mm -hmm. and take care of it and make sure the facility is open. We've had up to almost 40 people attend. Wow, uh, we that had is a, great. And uh, it was wonderful. And so, and the, but the, the thing to understand kind of is uh, it's a couple, you know, a, a husband and wife where the one has Alzheimer's and maybe they used to love to go out to eat or go out to do things. But when the one has the Alzheimer's or dementia, they're not going to do it. They're not going to be comfortable. They're not going to know if the restaurant's going to be, you know, conducive. But when we yeah. set these up, we've talked to the restaurant. We get a separate area, kind of, and and we and we have some dedicated servers that are just marvelous, and and they provide great care and uh, support to these individuals. And it gives the 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 person with dementia and the caregiver they actually start to make friends, mm -hmm. and they start to develop social connections that they might have lost. You know, they yep. a lot of people when the person as the dementia progresses, they lose their social network mm -hmm. because people don't know how to react to them or they don't feel Well, the caregivers, too. Right, the caregivers. You and know, they, they're, they're and stuck. so it's good support for them. They stuck, but they have to stay home. They have to mm -hmm. take care of their loved one, and that's what they want to do. Yeah. Uh, um, but they also need that social interaction with others. Yes. Uh, and so that is <clears throat> extremely important. And so we have found that the memory cafes, these lunch bunches, um, we do three to four bus trips to different areas mm. each year. We went to the Little Farmer in the fall. We're oh. actually going to go to the Aaron's uh, Museum uh, in March coming up. Uh, and uh, that's an amazing museum. And we'll have lunch and we'll do, it'll be an outing and it'll be on a bus. And uh, we, we do things like that too. Again, we're trying to, we want to focus, like I mentioned earlier, on what they can do mm -hmm. and on that physical and social and mental engagement and activity. Uh, and particularly, like at the Aarons Museum, I've been up there, there's a lot of history there about how their equipment was made years ago. So, yeah. you know, and maybe it's gonna be maybe more the men that are gonna like it because they might have more tinkered with those kinds of things, but they're mm -hmm. gonna remember a lot of those things. Sure. Um, so anyway, that's, that's why we, we do these, these types of programs. Um, I do when it, when I do want to talk about MindWorks because that's a very unique yes. Program. Let's talk about that because we're down to about thirteen minutes that we have left. Oh my! Can okay. you believe that? Wow, so let's talk about MindWorks. It fast. is. This People is like, think, yeah. oh, an hour, an yeah. hour, but it goes well, just as like you can that. See, I, I do so. like to talk. Anyway, <laughs> uh, MindWorks. So MindWorks <clears throat> is different than a memory cap. It's similar, but then it's very different. The similarity is that it's an actual class. And we run now 11 of these every week, 50 weeks out of the year. 11 uh, a week. 11 okay. a week, to three hours. And this wow. is uh, a facility, and there is limits on this. They, has, they have to register, mm -hmm. and we can only have up to probably 10 to 13 individuals. Okay. And basically, we take care of uh, up to 13 people with dementia for three hours while their loved one does not stay. They don't stay. So, that's, so they get a little bit of a break also. Correct. It's, that's the difference. They get the respite time, and we call okay. it respite. They get three yes. hours of respite time, which is extremely important because it gives them time to, if they have a doctor's appointment, they need to go shopping or they need to... Or they just want to go to a movie or just yes. sit and just or, rest. Or, and then we, do, we run, uh, not every week, but every other week, we run support groups during that time. So then they can meet with other 
spouses or loved ones of a person and then they can share with each other what has worked or doesn't work. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we, we have found and um, coming out of the pandemic, we only had two of these or right before the pandemic, we had two every week and less than 10 people in those classes now we're running 11 after the pandemic wow that's and fantastic and we're up to we'll we'll have served there's always people that are entering and leaving like we a few people they're snowbirds so they mm -hmm. they're down in florida now but then they'll rejoin when they come back up uh, some unfortunately pass away or be moved to a facility or it progresses mm -hmm. that they can't participate anymore um, but where we probably have, I think, around 60 active individuals, so then that's providing another 60 caregivers with that respite time. Sure. Um, we'll have provided uh, almost 6,000 hours of respite time to caregivers in 2022, and with all the classes wow. that we have now, we should exceed 10,000 hours. If you put a value on that of maybe 24 dollars an hour which is cheap actually that's on the low end yeah. or twenty five dollars I mean that's twenty five dollars times ten that's several million dollars of time you know what you know what yeah uh, and so that's the that value. is fantastic uh, uh, yeah. can they find out uh, from your website then yes, Fox about, Valley Memory Project yes. org they can find uh, mind works, works information yes. there the memory cafe yes. information your newsletter all of that yes um, what you know, what kinds of signs should family members be looking for, uh, say, for their parents or sure. whatever? Now, we just had a holiday season. Mm -hmm. Some people, they may live away from their parents, another city, another state perhaps, um, and they may not see them on a real regular basis. So for them to notice a difference in mom or dad, uh, it, it might be more apparent than when you see someone every day or several times a week or several times a month and you you kind of miss that slow progression um, into dementia. What signs should we be looking for in someone that we love? Uh, great question and actually um, and actually we've had quite a few phone calls now that the holidays are over and no. I'll, I'll get to that and that sort of that yeah. happens because yeah. yeah families get together <clears throat> and if a loved one has uh, has the memory loss issues they're, they're, they'll be it will become more apparent and particularly if like they're staying at the house so you want to you want to look for abnormal things throughout the house um, okay. particularly like let's say that you know your mom or your dad was extremely organized and kept the house ship shape for years and all of this and then okay so look for differences you know mm -hmm. look for signs of dip, you know differences uh, look for them like if they're not doing what they used to love to do like cooking like let's say that you know the the mom would always make a certain dish for Thanksgiving and all of a sudden she didn't do it and you'd ask why and she wouldn't answer or, you know she might get defensive and like well I just didn't want to do it mm -hmm. that could be a warning sign okay. that maybe there's memory loss um, car issues you know driving again you mm -hmm. know drive see how they're doing driving that's a, a, a very very good uh, thing um, things in odd places leaving things in odd places hmm. um, mm -hmm. I mean, I have literally put the milk in the cupboard and the cereal in the refrigerator. I've really? Done that, but I was like 40 years old when I did it, so I'm not too worried. I right. was, just, I was right. really busy, and I think I, I, I don't know. I think yeah. I, I think it was when my kids were younger, and I hadn't probably slept. So you yep. know, things um, happen. Things happen. But you know that 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 you know. But if I was 65 living by myself. That might be, you know, 70, uh, that would, might be a warning sign. There's things in odd places. You know, you, you talk about living by yourself. Um, and, you know, people love their homes, usually. Yes. They want to stay in their homes as long as they can, in most cases. What do you do, uh, or what, what does a child or a loved one do in the event where you've got a parent or... Mm -hmm a sibling, whatever the situation may be. Sure. You've got a loved one who is, you can see is starting to have some issues. Mm -hmm. um, maybe they're, you know, a little bit more progressed uh, along the stage of mm -hmm. dementia, but they want to remain in their home. They want mm -hmm. to maintain any bit of independence. 
that they can for as long as they can. Or maybe they just don't want to leave because they're afraid that someone's going to try and steal their home from them or whatever, you know, whatever, whatever is going on in their particular situation and their mind. How do you, how does a loved one deal with a situation like that where someone just doesn't want to leave? You can't force them to leave. No, and, and, and actually it is best for them to stay in the home as long as they can. Uh, it's best for the person with okay. the dementia, and it's really best for the caregiver, as long as they're safe, as mm -hmm. long as they can stay safe. And there is things that can be done to help that. So, and one of the biggest things is recognizing, and this is really falls on the caregiver, whether it's the spouse or the child, is they're going to need help and support. They're going to need to get educated about the disease and how it's going to progress and some of the challenges that are going to happen down the road so that then they can prepare for that and help their loved one through those changes. Um, one of our programs that we started last year, it's brand new to Wisconsin, it's called Memory Link and we have two full-time resource navigators and they're, this is a free service, their job is to work with families uh, for two days, two months, two years, ten years and to help them through that, what we call the journey, uh, okay. the journey and the challenges. So if they start to recognize these types of symptoms and, the, and they, can, they can either as a caregiver or they can work with the person with dementia or both, these resource navigators can help them figure out and, and help educate them and help them provide better care or connect them to resources. So okay. there's actually like home modifications that can be done to make your home safer sure. for a person with dementia. Uh, alarms on the doors if somebody's wandering. Sometimes people with dementia want to walk and they don't remember how to get home. So you've got to know if they try to leave the home. So mm -hmm. you can, and we actually can provide some assistance with, we work with Rebuilding Fox Cities to actually implement mm -hmm. those kinds of uh, safety to things into homes or just, or grab bars or things to yeah. make the, the home safer. Um, so we, we actually do, we can, work, we can work with families and help them through some of those challenges. And um, so it's called Memory Link. Memory Link. I underlined it multiple times. Um, it, that also, there's a, no pun intended, yeah. but there's a link on your website there to is, that? There is, yes, okay. there is, yes, there's a, yeah, and uh, they're resource navigators and they are, they're two <laughs> marvelous people. They can actually do home visits if it's necessary, uh, or they work with them on the phone or they meet with them wherever they would like. And they can, again, if they can't help them directly, then they try to refer them. So if they want to get mm -hmm. a diagnosis, they're going to help them figure out whether it's neuroscience or, you know, how to get a diagnosis. Right. If they eventually want to consider long-term care, they help them through that. Uh, or if it's, okay, you know, dad's probably shouldn't be driving anymore, but he's not willing to give yeah. up his car. Yeah. Um, or the license. How, or how do we deal with that? And they yep. can help with some strategies to deal with that. So, so it sounds to me, and please correct me no. if I'm wrong here, but it sounds to me like Memory Link is a service and you said it's free it is and it helps families or the person themselves mm -hmm. um, along the entire journey it's a continuum of uh, not a continuum of care but a continuum mm -hmm. of um, support support yes. and Resource. assistance and assistance and resources, resources. Yes. yes yes that is that is wonderful now how is something like that funded um, well, we actually received a federal grant um, last year, and that enabled us to start this um, program here in the state, first of its kind in Wisconsin, been used other places very successfully. Okay. Uh, we have, though, what we've been told, have grown it faster than they've ever seen it grow anywhere else. There are two resource navigators are now serving uh, 100 families, uh, wow. about 50 each. Uh, and, and actually, we, they just had five new referrals after the holidays from huh. families that experienced some issues or some things that came up and felt they needed help. Um, and, and yeah, they can work, uh, and we actually, they do work with, uh, there's a handful of people that living home and alone with mm -hmm. dementia that have really no care support at all. So hmm. they can actually work with them and help them too. They're, might, yeah. they're more early to mid-stage, 
but help them to prepare for some of those changes and some of those challenges so that it doesn't end up as a crisis situation. Okay. Uh, Good. So. We're down to about three minutes, so sure. I, I quickly want to touch on one thing. Yep. Um, you know, we see commercials all the time for products like Prevagen is the first one that comes to my mind. I know that there are others, mm -hmm. um, and I'm not picking on Prevagen, uh, but that is the first one that comes sure. to my mind. So we see these all the time, and they, they seem to suggest that, uh, you know, oh, they're great for brain health. I've talked to my own doctor about this, and, um, you know, they can help your brain a little bit, but it's not going to prevent dementia if you are, That's correct. you know, predisposed to getting dementia. Mm -hmm. um, what do these things really do in, in kind of a nutshell? Um, I mean, I, I, I don't want to, I don't want to say that they're not at all helpful, but the, the, there, there's no evidence that, that they that they don't they don't change they don't prevent you from getting it and mm -hmm. sure they have some things in them that maybe they make you feel better and there's nothing wrong with that um, the doctors who are on our board um, say that they don't really do much mm -hmm. they again go back to physical <laughs> mental social engagement those are the three things they physically mentally and socially active and those are the best ways eat well um, and you know, even just vitamin supplements could be just as good as Prevagen. And mm -hmm. I'm not, you know, I'm not knocking Prevagen. Right, right. But they're not gonna, they're not going to prevent you from getting Alzheimer's, or they're not going to cure it. Exactly. And that's a lot of people think they are. Yeah. And and I want to touch on one other thing sure. that, you know, you can do a lot for yourself mm -hmm. um, by just you know helping to keep your brain active. And when I had uh, Michael Garrigan on the show mm -hmm. in 2021, 20, I think, I don't know, I've lost track of the dates here with, with the new year, uh, mm -hmm. but when Michael Garrigan was, uh, and he's a dementia expert, when he was on the show uh, last time, he said, it's not just about doing crossword puzzles every day, mm -hmm. it's about doing something different. Yes you know, maybe trying a different kind of puzzle, whatever the case may be. But mm -hmm. so you can do a lot to help your your own brain health by learning new things. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, uh, actually, yeah, as, as we age, it's really important for people to try to do new things. Sure. That's one, I'm on my third career kind of. I was in the business world, I was in the legislature, now I'm right <laughs> doing this. And so this is how, this is me, this is, I, but that's, it. but it's just, you it's know. It's stimulating but, your but, mind and it's keeping your, your brain healthy. Yeah, and, um, and I, I think there's a doctor I know, they're learning how to like play the guitar. You know, they, there you they go. just wanted to do something different. And so right. uh, those, yes, those are really, really important. But it's really, I guess the, you know, the big thing is people with dementia, we want to try to make their lives, give them a quality of life with their loved ones and the caregivers because that's what they're going to remember. Okay, wonderful. Thank you so much for being here. Thank it's, you for having me. It's been an educational hour, and I hope that we will have you back on uh, in the future because this is a topic that you know I don't think we can say enough of. Or about. Thank you so much. Uh, you're entirely welcome. Um, and uh, by the way, we are looking for volunteers for the show. There's a thing up on your screen right now. Uh, about four to five hours a month is about what it takes. You don't need any experience. We'll train you. It's a lot of fun. You learn new things, and we'd love to have you join us. So get in touch with me um, through those two means if uh, you'd be interested in learning more about that. Uh, thank you again to my guest, and uh, thank you to my crew. And, of course, thank you to you. We will see you next time. Until then, take good care. Keep your eye on us. We've got our eye on Oshkosh.